Hello everybody, welcome to another midweek episode. Now, we're getting quite a few comments uh, over the last few weeks, people saying, bread oven, you keep mentioning your bread oven, but we never get to see it. So today, we're going in there, and there is a nice lady who messaged us, um, she was one of the first to message us, after episode three or four, and she said, my husband doesn't normally watch these type of vlogs, but he keeps watching you because he can't wait to see the bread oven. So if that was you, go and get your husband now, because we're going in. But before we go in the bread oven building, we wanted to just explain the geography of it, because this is the actual oven. This is just the building that gives us the entrance into the oven. Uh, however, I can't show you the outside of the oven for reasons that will become obvious. If you come and have a look through the window, now in here is the dome. It's it'll be a clay dome with bricks inside, uh, but unfortunately, there's a lot of debris in there. Um, we can't actually get in there at this stage to show you. So you won't be able to see the outside of the oven, but we can certainly show you the inside. Now, the other thing is in this little room next to it, you'll remember, I think it was the last episode or the one before, uh, when I went through the hole in the chicken, the chicken hole, um, there's a building, there's a, another room the other side of here with its own door, but the roof has collapsed, I'm afraid, so I can't actually open the door. But I can just show you the opening up into the oven, but it's not going to help as much. So that would be the access to it. But unfortunately, that's as far as I can open the door. So we can't get in, but it doesn't matter. We'll show you the inside of the oven. Um, as you can see, the roof is largely intact, but there's been years of growth on there, moss, etc. That's not good because it moves the tiles that effectively the water gets in there. Um, we've not done anything yet with it because we've basically been doing other things, but this all needs to come off and be properly re-roofed. And I think it's worth putting a waterproof membrane on there um, so to do the job properly. And then we can actually use the building for what? We don't know, but we'll, we'll work it out. Um, I wanted to show you the front here. So before we go in, I uh, just want to show you this front entrance. It's a, a brick construction which has been rendered. Um, I quite like the sort of fallen render look really, but it needs repointing or completely re rendering, so we'll make a judgment on that. Uh, this is really neat, the way they face the, the building, and it's all the way down the side. Uh, really neat and tidy. It's a lovely building. And granite surround, solid granite, big solid frame. There's been some repair work at some point. This looks like cement to me rather than um, lime. So possibly need to take that off and uh, redo it. We'll see. Uh, door got nice character to it but it's a bit rotten at the bottom there so we'll try and save as much of it as we can and you remember in one of our early episodes we found this pathway that leads to it so we'll we've still got that to do and to face to edge you know uh, but we will do that so let's go in <laughs> it's a nice cobweb behind nice you. Nice cobwebs and stuff, but um, this uh, is quite a nice little feature actually, this window, but the actual frames had it really, and this isn't glass, it's all perspex, cheap perspex, so needs redoing, but um, anyway, if you'd like to step inside. Now it's a little bit dark in here. 
even with the window and door open. And it's cobweb heaven, so uh, you'll have to bear with us. Dodgy damp ceiling. Right, the roof itself, most of the wood is structurally sound, I have checked it, but it is in a state of disrepair. It's not in any immediate danger of collapsing, but um, I do keep the door shut. We don't come in here very often, and I certainly wouldn't be coming in here on a windy day just in case, but we're okay for now. So roof needs redoing but most of the structure is sound um, it's quite characterful all this old wood so we'd certainly keep what we can I mean look at it it's just beautiful up there in the middle the structure and you can see it's a lot of it's dark that's because of the smoke from the bread oven over the years um, but let's just walk around then um, so handy little cupboard space for storing whatever you want to store in here, all your bread making things, I guess. Load of old tools and Yeah, that. there's lots of old tools and things which have just <coughs> been dumped here. An old pickaxe. Actually, that's nice, isn't it? Heavy. A few forks and whatever. I'm assuming this is a garden roller. I don't think it's part of the bread making process. But if you know better, please let us know. Uh, but anyway, this building actually had two purposes. Obviously the bread oven, which I'll show you in detail. But also over here, um, there's the big storage tank here. And you'll see, I'll just bring you over here. Okay, so the building has two purposes. Bread oven and this, uh, the lavery or lavoir, uh, which is basically a laundry. Now, I'm not an expert in, in ancient laveries, but let's see if we can work it out. There's a big storage tank in the corner there, which we assume was for water. In here, you see this dome shape. There would be a, a cauldron, a big pot with a fire underneath it, so they'd boil water here. Now, we know this because our friends over the road, they have a chateau, and they actually have a, lav a lavery uh, which is in much better condition than ours, and they've got the original pot. Um, so what would happen, they'd boil water here. Now, this was pre-detergent, pre-soap days. Um, and so what used to happen, ash from a fire is very good to, as a natural detergent. So we assume they would be able to take the ash from the bread oven and use it to boil and clean the clothes with. Now, whether the clothes went into the cauldron with ash in there, or whether the clothes soaked in this corner tank with the ash in there, maybe soaked for a period of time to allow the ash to do its job, um, we're not quite sure. Um, I suppose we'd do a bit of research into that. But then I think they would have wanted somewhere to be able to rinse the clothes. Now, there may have been something in this corner uh, a fresh water tank, but I can't see anything. But in the walled garden, we do have a trough there, which has a specific shape that they used to use in laveries. Now we always assumed it was just a garden trough for storing water for the garden, but looking at it, we think that may be connected, but we're not sure. Now here is that trough that I was talking about. Now, we've always just assumed it was just to put water in there for the sake of the garden uh, to feed the garden but we're just wondering because this sloped edge I know from other lavoirs that we've seen uh, the washing of clothes etc was done on the sloped edge so that's why we wondered whether this is actually part of the lavoir um, where Baxter is poking his head under all these old pipes um, there is something here we're not sure maybe they stored the wood here but all this is just filled in with rubble but we're wondering maybe if there was some um, maybe um, a place to store the wood or something funnily enough that red stone on the top is the same colour as this one on the top here yeah and it's connected. got um, a round shape 
to it. The yeah, um, may all be connected. We're not sure. <coughs> Um, we need to get all the rubber out. We need to get all the rubble out and just check to see what's going on there, really. It may have been another storage tank. Maybe that that was sealed originally and that was where they rinsed the clothes. I don't know. But anyway, that's interesting. It's uh, not just the bread oven. It's uh, a lavery as well. Okay, well, here is the actual oven itself, which actually looks in pretty good condition. And it's huge. And... We think, we're not 100% sure, but what we think is this was the main bread oven for the estate. And we believe that the village grew up around this estate. So that's why it would have needed to be very big. So we'll show you that in a second. Um, There's a pe bread paddle. <laughs> I love this, the bread paddle. So you would have put your loaves on there, slid in into the oven. Obviously a bit missing in the middle there, but... A bit of the handle's missing. And a bit of the handle, but uh, that's a bread paddle, but it could one day become a pizza paddle. <laughs> so that's that. The doors have had it. One of them's on the floor. This one doesn't look as though it's long for this earth. Um, but let's have a look inside. This piece of metal work here would be to hang a pot maybe they had a fire down here something like that I don't know right let's see if we can get you inside the actual oven itself so that's lovely and it's in very good condition obviously the floor needs a bit of a good sweep out and maybe um, there might be some um, cement tiles in here fireproof cement tiles which might need something doing to them but generally that is pretty good condition let me see if i can go all the way around there's the entrance appreciate it's a little bit dark now we haven't actually had a measure in there but we suspect measuring that it's about 12 feet from the front to the back and probably 10 feet side to side. All right, let's do this properly. Let's measure it, let's not guess. Right, so there is 3.2. Two meters, which is roughly ten and a half feet, and I would say three point two. The width is slightly narrower, so three point two meters by two and a half, two and a half meters, which will be about eight feet. So ten and a half feet by eight feet, maybe. That's big, very big. And the next element is the chimney. Now I'll just take you up into the chimney. It might take a second or two for the lights to adjust. And there you have the chimney. And you'll see, there's the metal button, this here. That's a big old crack in it. It's actually coming away the front edge of this um, chimney. And I'll just show you the other side, which is doing the same, so you can see here so that chimney needs to be rebuilt um, but funny enough that's not that massive a job and you can see this iron bar here which has all the hooks on so you can hang food etc and there you have the chimney from the inside well Max and Baxter approve they can't wait for the bread. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed that little tour of our bread oven. Um, before we talk about plans, we just wanted to ask a small favour. If you are regular viewers, or you think you're going to be, uh, would you be kind enough to subscribe to our channel and press the notification bell? It's quite important for us, actually. We've never realised until we started the channel how important it is. Um, it's all to do with YouTube algorithms where they 
give preference to bigger channels with more viewers, more subscribers, etc. And so small channels that are starting like ours get squeezed out a little bit. So if you'd be kind enough to subscribe and press the notification bell, that would help us immensely. Thank you. As far as the bread oven is concerned, we haven't really got any specific plans for it. No. It's quite a good size in there though, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lovely building. Uh, lots of character, etc. Mm. But I think when we looked at the house and viewed it, we obviously looked inside here, but we didn't really have any thoughts as to what we would do with it. Um, Maybe we have to do pizza nights. Pizza nights, that would be fantastic. You're, you're all invited, of course, <laughs> but not all at once. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we've got no, no real plans for it. I know we said we were going to house the chickens in there, which we probably will. Not in the pizza oven. Not in the pizza bread oven, but the other part behind. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, any ideas? Let us know. Well, it's not big enough for sheets. Those aren't. It's, it's <coughs> long and narrow. I suppose if you were clever how you designed it, you could create a sheet, but it's very, very expensive to do that. And it's quite a saturated market, the, the holiday cottage market over here. Uh, everybody who moves to France wants an outbuilding or two so they can convert to holiday accommodation for uh, for income but um, it's it's a well-worn path that one it's very oversubscribed and it's very expensive uh, to convert and to also get your customers so it's not something that we've considered with any great enthusiasm is it? No. Uh, we had thought about glamping maybe a couple of glamping tents or pods in the walled garden there and to use the other part of the building as a wash and outdoor kitchen facilities so that's a possibility um, but yeah so there you go you've seen it so hopefully uh, you've enjoyed it so thank you for joining us and see you Sunday, Sunday. bye bye